Welcome to the Excel Boot Camp, a series of videos meant to teach the basics of Microsoft Excel using examples from my physical chemistry courses at Sam Houston State University. Today's topic is all about arrays. Arrays are, are any grouping of numbers in Excel, like a column, a row, or even a table. We're going to learn about manipulating those arrays, particularly using the, the transpose uh, function in Excel. Then we're going to deal with array multiplication and learn about sum product. It's the way we're going to do numerical integration. And then finally, matrix multiplication. It's an extension of the sum product function where you can do uh, essentially multiplication or integration of whole blocks of data at one time. So let's dive in. There are different types of arrays. You might have a row or a column of numbers or any block like a table that number or block of numbers is an array. So you could have three numbers in a row or in a column. Those are both arrays. One's a row array and the other is a column array. You can manipulate these. So let's learn about the transpose function. The transpose function rotates the array around the diagonal. So learn how this works just by inspecting what's going on here. If we take the transpose of this row vector a, b, and c, we end up with a column vector of A, B, and C. You see how that rotates around that diagonal. And it's kind of confusing for, for you to talk about a diagonal on a single row or a single column. But the diagonals always start with that first value. And the first value is A. And so if we rotate around that A, notice it's the pivot point. And so B and C go down below A and become a column. If we transpose a column array, it becomes a row. If we take a block of data, which is called a matrix, we can still transpose it. Uh, now the, the diagonal is defined as the two values here shown as A and E. And if we rotate this um, particular matrix around A and E, around that diagonal, you see that B moves to the top and C and F move to the top as well. But A and E remain unchanged. They're on the diagonal. Notice if you're going to transpose in Excel, uh, you can type out the formula transpose and put the array in the parentheses, but you need to know how many cells it's going to take up. So if you'll notice here, you have a, a two by six or a three, three rows by two columns. So a three by two matrix, and that's going to turn into a two row by three column matrix, a two by three. So you would need to, in Excel, select all of these cells and then in the formula area where you enter the formula, you type equals transpose, open parenthesis, and then you select the cells that you're going to transpose, close the parenthesis, and then you hit control shift enter. This tells Excel to copy that formula into all of the result cells. So let's, let's go try it. So let me bring up uh, an Excel spreadsheet here. And so we're going to take this this set of uh, cells here. We're going to take this whole set of numbers here. These are the molecular formulas for glycine and ethanol. And we're going to transpose them over here on the right. And so I've got a four row by two column matrix, if you will. And so when I transpose that, it's going to turn into two rows by four columns. So I select the result that I want. I come up here with the mouse and I type in equals transpose open parenthesis and then I select the array that I want to transpose close parenthesis and then this is important you hit control shift enter and it transposes the matrix so you see now what I, what was in in two columns is now in two rows and notice the diagonal here two and six are still there, two and six. The five has come up to the top, the one has come up to the top, the two has come up to the top. Now let's say I forget to type in the control shift enter. So let me delete all of this. And we'll try it again. So I come up here, transpose. Oops, I forgot the equal sign. Transpose, I select my array close parenthesis and I just hit enter. I get a single number and if I inspect that number it says there's an error in the value. 
So if you don't know about the control shift enter, you can't use array formulas. So it's really important. That's why it's in red on my PowerPoint. Let's say I forget that transpose is going to produce a, a two by four matrix and I do something incorrect like this. I select basically the, the same shape over here. Type in equals transpose. Open parenthesis. Oops, I misspelled it. Transpose. Notice how I got a tool tip when I spelled it correctly. Select the array. Close parenthesis. Hit control shift enter. And it gives me the first two, it transposes the first two and I get that four by four, but then I get some errors down here. And so you really can't do it wrong. I mean, you, you can do it incorrectly, but it's obvious when you've screwed something up, you get errors. So that's nice. And transpose is pretty useful as we'll see in a minute. So let's go back to the PowerPoint and, and look about look at the, a different kind of array uh, formula. So that's array manipulation, in particular the transpose function. Let's look at how we can multiply arrays. So looking at this row times a column, I can take the row 1, 2, 3 and multiply by this column of numbers A, B, C and it's added together. So it's 1 times A plus 2 times B plus 3 times C. So when you do this sum you get a single number. And the, the fast way to do this is called sum product. Notice the, the name is very descriptive. It's the sum of the product of two arrays. So it takes the first value in the first array and multiplies it by the first value in the second array. And likewise for the second and the third. And adds those together. Now since some product produces a single number, you don't need to use control shift enter because you just type it into a single cell and you get the sum product. So let's go try that. You've actually been using sum product, but you've been doing it by hand essentially your whole chemistry career. Anytime you calculate a molar mass, you're using some product. So let's prove that. We have glycine, which has the molecular formula C2H5NO2. And so I have an array of numbers here, C2H5N1O2. And here are the molar masses, uh, shortened to the ones place, of carbon is 12 grams per mole, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen are 1, 14, and 16 respectively. And I'd want to take this array and multiply by that array and add the numbers together to get the molar mass. And so I could do this by hand or I could use my array formulas. So I'm going to type in equals sum product. See if I notice the tooltips coming up and that's the one I want, I just hit tab and it fills it in for me. Then I select the first array and I hit a comma and I hit this, select the second array, close parentheses, and I just hit enter. I don't need to hit control shift enter. And there I get 75 grams per mole for glycine. Now here's ethanol, and you might be tempted to just drag this over. Uh-oh, we got a problem. Ethanol does not weigh 1,208 grams per mole. So what happened? Well, you can double click that cell and see that the first array formula reference scooted over, which is good, but my molar mass has moved as well. This takes us back to that first video of anchoring cells. So let's delete that number. Let's go back in here and I'm going to select those values, the red ones that correspond to the molar mass, and I'm going to hit F4 and I'm going to anchor those and hit enter. And now when I drag this cell over and copy it, it works. The molar masses are anchored on the molar mass column, and yet the molar masses float with wherever I copy that cell. So that's a quick way to calculate molar masses. You have a table of your elemental masses, and you can come up with the molecular formulas. And this might be f something useful if you wanted to make a quick Excel spreadsheet that could quickly calculate molar masses. I would use a little bit more accurate atomic masses uh, from the periodic table if I were to do that. Uh, you could try this in, in other things too. You might come up with a quantitative structure property relationship like we have in uh, PCHEM2. We developed this combustion enthalpy model that's based purely on the molecular uh, on the molecular formula. And so let's try that again. Equals sum product. 
I select my first array, comma, my second array, and I hit F4 to anchor that, close parenthesis, and I just hit enter. And there I get the enthalpy of combustion based upon the molar molecular formula for glycine. Because I've anchored the combustion enthalpy column, I can just drag that over and I get it for both of them. So that's a fantastic way to use some product. Next we're going to talk about matrix multiplication. Matrix multiplication is really just an extension of the uh, sum product formula, but it's, uh, it's extended from just being one column or one row to a block of cells. So in this example we have two matrices multiplied by each other. One is a horizontal rectangular matrix times a vertical rectangular matrix. And so the way the matrix multiplication works is you go from the, the top row of the first matrix multiplied by the first column of the second matrix and that's added together and that's the first cell in the result. So here you have 1A times 1A plus 2B plus 3C. You see that's the first row times the first column summed together gives you the first value in the result matrix. Then you push that top row all the way through all of the columns and so then the next cell in the result would be the first row of the first matrix times the second column in the second matrix. So you have 1D plus 2E plus 3F. Then you go to the second row and it's the second row times the first column. So 4, 5, and 6 times A, B, and C. And then the second row times the second column. 4, 5, 6 times D, E, F. If you'll notice that the, the number of columns in the first matrix have to match the number of rows in the second matrix. And that's the multiplication rule that we'll talk about next. Also notice that the number of rows in the first matrix and the number of columns in the second matrix define how many rows and columns you have in the result. So even though these two matrices are rectangular, the result is a square matrix because we have the same number of rows in the first matrix as we have in columns in the second matrix. Now this is fairly tedious to do by hand as you can imagine because you have uh, three cells here and three cells there and so you do all of these multiplications and additions but in Excel you just have a simple uh, function called mmult for matrix multiplication. So you do mmult and you select array 1 which would be this first matrix of cells comma and select array 2 which would be the second matrix of cells and we'll see how that works in a second. Let me talk about this matrix multiplication rule. Pay close attention to this and I've color coded it my, to make it uh, as clear as possible. If I have matrix 1 times matrix 2 I get matrix 3 and so if matrix 1 has a certain row by column dimension and matrix 2 has a row in columns the column of matrix 1 has to match the row of matrix 2 because I have to have that um, number of columns in that first row when I rotate it over and multiply by the number of rows in matrix 2 they have to match. I have to have a number uh, I have to have a number corresponding to each so I can do the multiplication. And then I end up with a matrix 3 that contains the outside. It contains the rows from matrix 1 and the columns from matrix 3. So this is all written out here. Matrix 3 is a row by column, row 1, those number of rows, and columns from matrix 2. So here's an example. If I have a 2 by 3 times a 3 by 2, I get a 2 by 2, and that's what we saw just previously. So the columns of matrix 1 must equal the rows of matrix 2. That's rule number 1. The result will have the number of rows from matrix 1 and the number of columns from matrix 2. In Excel, this is how you write out that formula, and you use Control Shift Enter. So let's go look at several examples of this. So if I wanted to do all of the previous calculations at once, I have two matrices here. I have a matrix here, and I have a matrix here. But there's a problem. I've got two columns in this matrix, and I have four rows in this matrix. And so we want to transpose this matrix. We want to flip it so that the number 
these four here will go over and multiply by those. And so I'm going to select this formula and pay careful attention. I'm going to come up here and hit equals m mult open parenthesis and then I want to transpose this matrix inside this formula. Transpose and I'm going to select these numbers right there. So it's going to transpose those numbers and take it from a 4 by 2 and flip it around the diagonal so it's a 2 by 4. And a 2 by 4 matrix will match this matrix on the right. I'm going to close that parenthesis and hit comma and then I'm going to select array number 2. Close parenthesis and I'm going to hit control shift enter and there's my two molecular molar masses 75 for glycine 46 for ethanol and here are my enthalpies of combustion 1021 for glycine and 1208 for ethanol and I did that in a very quick manner all of the manipulation was just in two formulas transpose and m molt and we will use these in the lab uh, when we are doing the, the uh, Schrodinger equation and the transition dipole moment lab uh, just as an example I'll show you how much time this saves so in the Schrodinger equation lab we have all of these wave functions there's we go up to n equals 15 so we have 15 columns of data <clears throat> And you'll notice that there are quite a lot of values here. Uh, there's a hundred rows in this cell. And so this is a 100 by 15 matrix. And when we talk about the orthonormality condition, we, we, we take a wave function times itself, we get one when we integrate over all space. And a wave function times any other wave function, we get zero when we uh, integrate wave function one times wave function two. And so what is integration? Well, it's, it's this wave function, every value times the corresponding value in the other wave function, and then added together. Wait a minute. Two functions, the corresponding values multiplied by each other and added together, that sounds like sum product. Or if I've got a block of data, that sounds like m mult. So let's create a page, and we're going to call it, using Dirac notation, bracket psi vertical line psi close bracket and that's the direct notation for the integral over all space of psi times psi now just for grins I'll go ahead and put the quantum numbers in here so 1 2 3 I'll go down to 15 notice how it autofills once you set up a trend 1 two, three, so there's three to set up the trend. I grab those three and drag the little green line and bring it on over to 15. Okay, so now I can make my 15 by 15 matrix. Now how's it going to be 15 by 15? Well I have a 100 by 15 block of data and I'm going to transpose that. So it's a 15 by 100 rectangular block and I'm going to matrix multiply that by the 100 by 15 block. And so the 100's match, and when we do the sums, those disappear, and we're left with a 15 by 15 matrix. So I select this whole thing, and I type in equals m mold, and transpose, and I go get all of my wave functions. I used those navigation tools. I did control shift right arrow and then control shift down arrow and it selected the whole block and I didn't have to use the mouse and scroll around. Okay, close parenthesis, comma, and I go back up to the top and do that again. Control shift right and down, close parenthesis, and that closes the M mult and I'm ready to hit control shift enter and we just did 225 integrals that's amazing we did the 225 integrals with the control shift enter and there's our matrix 
Now, one thing is, it's not really the the um, the integral because it's the integral times dx. Okay, and so what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by dx, and we're going to anchor that cell, and then hit Control Shift Enter, and there's our orthonormality matrix. When a matrix, when a wave function is multiplied by itself, you get one. And when that wave function is multiplied by any other wave function, you get zero. So our wave functions are both orthogonal, orthogonal with the zeros, and normalized, where you integrate the wave function times itself over all space, and you get one. We'll talk about that a lot more in class, but I just wanted to show you how the m -mult equation is critical to what we do in these labs when we're doing numerical solutions to the Schrodinger equation, the transition dipole moment integrals, and showing the orthonormality conditions. So to recap, you need to know the matrix multiplication rules, and you need to know how to use the transpose function, and you need to know how to use sum product. They're very useful, not just for PCHEM, but for many, many other applications. All right, till next time, I'll see you later. I hope you found this episode of the Excel Bootcamp useful. This content is still being created, so subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when the next video is posted. Find more content at pchemforall.com. See you next time.